that's getting in the way of the PK fire deck. Yeah, usually that would. Do. Usually that would. And there's also, I've noticed here, mass change two in the deck uh, for the uh, mass hero dark rule. Yeah, that's very important. That's huge here, yeah, right? Yeah, because adding cards from Pathism or drawing cards from Pathism. And getting the getting it banished. Any of them. Yeah, any of them will will affect um, Dark Lord there. Okay, guys, we're going to go over to the table and we're going to get straight to the action. Okay, I'm not entirely sure who's taking the first turn, but we'll let you know as soon as we do. Or Ben's going first. Ben's going so first. Uh, okay, that seems pretty good. Uh, although that does leave him open to a possible Storm Fourth, but he could set up a Dark Lord if he wants to. Mm -hmm. oh, which actually does get outplayed by a Storm Fourth, but at least a Storm Fourth gets banished. And yeah. Uh, well, because there's no ideas, there's actually no spell recursion actually going to be happening. Oh wait, no, 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 no there is no idea. Right. It's, red, it's red and blue there. Uh, okay, so we're going to be seeing for Ben Sherman, his opening has a Lure of Darkness, of which he plays two, uh, the Phantom Knight's Ancient Cloak, Skarm, Malavanch of the Burning Abyss, Seer, Malavanch of the Burning Abyss, and Farfa, Malavanch of the Burning Abyss. And for our Monarch player, we see Tenacity of the Monarchs, Monarch Stormforth, the Prime Monarch, a red layer and an Erebus. So Ben Sherman is going to draw into two more monsters off this. Wow, well, that's, that's the five monster hand. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. Well, that's to be expected when he's playing 29 monsters. <laughs> Which one of these six monsters do I wish to banish? Then you're going to want to banish a Burning Abyss monster because they've got the least effect. Yeah, in this matchup where you have uh, the overlap of the three different types, which is the Speedroids, the Phantom Knights, and the uh, Burning Abyss cards, the Burning Abyss actually, they can make the quick XC plays, but the problem is um, they you can't have them on field with anything else, so they end up getting destroyed. Okay, so we're going to see three sent to the graveyard, and that's actually really good because it's a Phantom Knight's Silent Boots being sent to the graveyard. Which can be banished for a Phantom Knight's trap card. That was a kaiju as well. He had one random kaiju in there. Yes, he, oh yeah, he also has kaiju. So uh, that's also uh, been revealed to James here. Yeah, he's seen all, almost all the archetypes. In fact, he, he's seen the Phantom Knights there, he's seen the BA, kaijus. We're just yet to see the speedroids. It's really crazy. He's playing a full. Ben is playing the full six. Uh, hand traps. I remember when this was a really big thing, playing the full six hand traps. Three max C, three effect wheel, right? Mm-hmm. It was a big deal. Yeah. And then end phase is gone. And you get tour guide. Yeah, uh, for those of you that are unaware of the title, um, when people say PK Fire, it's actually the uh, the fan's name. It's actually uh, Phantom Knight Burning Abyss. Um, is the actual name for the deck. And it also makes us in speed words. And Kaiju, apparently. Yeah, all of the all of the archetypes. But they all just work so well together. Yeah, so there's Beatrice. I sit there and threaten some uh, sending cards from deck to try and. Yeah, we are, he has got a storm forth, um, so he can just storm forth over this. Yeah, that's pathism. Path pathism. Pathism? I don't know why, why I was going to say that. Pathism. It's late in the day. It is. We're actually uh, just coming up to 4 p.m. where we are. Well, actually, 20 past 4 right now. Uh, pathism. Uh, I'm going to discard the Prime Monarch. So, two cards are going to be drawn, and then James is pretty much set up from here. Yeah. And Pathism gets banished. Turn. Return. Probably going to show all and three returns. Return. There we go. Three returns. So James has kind of crafted his hand here into something that he, you know, resembles something he wants to play with. So now here he goes, he's going to start actually making some plays. Uh, Domain of the Monarchs. Return of the Monarchs. 
Storm 4. Uh, the question is, uh, does Ben respond with his Beatrice? No, nope. he chooses not to. Okay. Oh, he is, uh, he is responding. Okay, so I'm just looking at the, uh, the tables for this round. That's nice. Rogue gloves going to the graveyard uh, for Beatrice's effect. And Dante will trigger, adding back Farfa. Erebus's effect going to trigger and Phantomized Fog Blade going to be used against that. Yeah, so pretty standard play for him here. And then he got uh, Dante back as well. Uh, from the other monster that was underneath, which was Sir. Yep. So there's just a tiny little loop that you've got going on where you can uh, Dante gets sent to the graveyard, you get Sir back to your hand, and Sir revives the Dante the next time it's sent to the graveyard. Yeah, it's a very uh, brick wall, and it's like a giant tar pit for your opponent close through. I mean, it just uh, stops your opponent just being able to attack through, because 2,500 defense is really big, so it's not very often you're attacking through the Dante, and you'd always run the risk that your opponent then assembles a combo they can put together and just adds back something that you weren't expecting, instead of just a sit. Yeah, just consuming their resources slowly to show. Uh, tour Guide from the Underworld being summoned by Ben, it's... Uh, an all-star in this deck. Yep. Just so you guys know, we're going to have uh, some stat breakdowns for you as soon as we can. Top 64, 32, etc. Return going on top. Majesty's Fiend, which is extremely good against this deck. Yeah. If he can get that on the board, um, even with Dante on the board, he um, he might just stop his opponent from doing almost everything. Well, you can just attack straight over it because he's got the main of the Monarch in play. So he gets a plus 800 on attack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does, yeah. Uh, so he's, he's just going to be able to start picking away uh, Ben's cards. Yeah. Uh, Koraz, the Light Monarch, being summoned for James. Most likely destroying itself and Return of the Monarchs. Let's go after. See, until did can you slumber any time there? No, no, I, I, yeah. And this is uh, during Ben's turn as well, so that kind of just makes things a little bit awkward. Yeah. Just the, the disruption can can just sometimes you know throw you off your game. Yeah, because it's actually uh, quite a lot of things happen when the Ether is summoned. It's sending, uh, it's taking one card out of the graveyard. It's also adding two cards back into the graveyard. It's summoning another monarch, and that monarch's going to go back to your opponent's hand. Um, and they've swapped them also for a twenty eight hundred attack monster. Uh, Phantom Lights, Ancient Cloak being flip summoned. Next, he's summoned for Levio the Sea Dragon. Yeah, so he's going to go and uh, get back one of his Phantom Knights monsters here. Uh, summon boots, which he's probably going. Oh uh, yeah, so he's probably going to use the trap card to special summon another one of those Phantom Knights. 
Yeah, or you can just add a silent boost for sound and special summon it. Uh, I think I don't know if you can do that when there's when the only other one is boots. Yeah, you can. Yeah. So you can only try and special summon it once per turn. See another Levier, the Sea Dragon. Uh, Levier is a Sea Dragon. Yeah, again, he's just kind of looping through these uh, through these Phantom Knights monsters. So that's why I decided to do it that way. Detach that, search for that. Then he can use the trap card. Yeah, really interesting. The Levier of Sea Dragons are just literally adding eighteen hundred attack to the field because if you use uh, monsters to make a Levier and then monsters to make a Levier, uh, it's just kind of a way of adding damage to the field without really losing your your resources. Um, but the Levio itself isn't very isn't very threatening to your opponent uh, if they've got big monsters in play. Yeah. Do you think we'll be likely seeing F zero here? Uh, uh, no. I think I saw there was there was a spell card in his hand which made me think that oh no it was Kaiju Slumber so no uh, maybe maybe we might see F zero here just to try and steal away that ever. Uh, Rugged gloves is also going to add a thousand attack to an XC monster a dark XC monster if it's special summon. Yeah, where we get special summon here. I don't know if he's got mass change too. Ah, there it is. Phantom no, Light's Break sword. sword. So the effect's going to activate and add 1,000 attack to it. 3,000 attack. Two levers. Has this done to your milk this time? It has, hasn't it? It has. I yeah. don't know. Wasn't it revived from Sir? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, sorry, no, you're right. Revived from Sir. Let's see where he decides to go with this one. He's got mass change too. Yeah, does he? He does. And honestly, I think Ben's just kind of amassed this board, but he doesn't really know what he's going to do with it. He's still got a big 2-8 monster facing him down. Even after that, he's uh, he's going to have to deal with this... Um, he's going to have to deal with this Kuraz. Okay, he decides to give up one of his Levio Sea Dragons uh, to take out the Domain. So he can ban banish the Rugged Gloves to yeah. send a Phantom Life to the Graveyard. It's probably going to send one of the trap cards. Yeah, yeah. That's the one he hasn't used this turn. Yeah. So he could he could still happily um, overlay Levio and Dante into an F0 right now. So he's going to get boots back in attack mode. Oh yeah, there's mass change too. But still, he does he have all of the attack points to be able to get over all these various monsters? You can get over them, but I don't think he can. He has lethal here, right? Unless yeah. I'm missing something. I feel, I feel like Ben's just kind of gone along with his play here and then not really realised that he just didn't have it. Yeah, like he kind of. It just feels like he's made. I'm sure there's logic to it that I'm uh, not perhaps seeing, but it kind of feels like he's just made plays for the sake of making plays. Yeah. Okay, yeah, here he's going to go. Um, because none of these monsters actually beat the Karaz in battle. No. Ah, but he's not ah. going to the Farfa. Uh, but it's Dante's... But then why, yeah, why is his Dante in defense mode? In defense mode. Because it would have switched back. He could have just got the free attack out of it. Yeah, that would have been... I think he's messed up here. Because he had 200 damage, uh, which would have been 3,000, 4,000, 6,400. Yeah. And the Prime Monarch coming out. Uh, there's actually um, no immediate answer to the Prime Monarch because otherwise, uh, with that Dark Lord in play, that Prime Monarch will get banished. Yeah. So he's going to go up into Beatrice and then send that Fogblade from his deck to the graveyard. So he's kind of setting up for next turn, ready to make some plays next turn. Uh, Silent Boots, right? Has he already used Silent Boots this turn? It's only once per turn you're allowed to use it. Yeah, I don't think he has. I think he's actually banished, but I don't think he's actually banished at this turn. Or was he no, I think the, the the banish effect. Because he used Levio the Sea Dragon to get back uh, Silent Boots. I'm not sure if he used that twice. 
Maybe, maybe I'm thinking of a previous turn. Maybe our judge is on it anyway. Yeah, um, he's keeping an eye on the game. Uh, we're going to see Frost Blast. Frost Blast taking out interrupted Kaiju Stumper. Actually, uh, wouldn't Kaiju Stumper be banished? It's actually no, very it's only opponent's cards. From a, really? Mm -hmm. Dark Claw's just the opponent's cards? Wow, okay. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. You could play it, you'd, you'd play it in the Burning Abyss um, Mirror Match. Seems legit. I can't, I can't believe I forgot that. It's just been so long since I've seen Dark Claw. Yeah. Would the should have the Kuras gone back to his hand though after being summoned from Ifra? Um, so I just quickly asked our judge here. Um, he says. That no, no, it, w it wouldn't have to go out of hand. Okay. Which uh, probably is better off for um, Ben here, so that he doesn't have a have have the the possibility of using that for us again. Uh, yeah, if you can hear a noise in the, in the background, um, that's the aircon that we have in for the room. Unfortunately, the machine keeps making um, noise whenever it feels like it, um, but we kind of need it on because it's boiling. Um, yeah, it's so very, very warm in here. I'm really sorry about that, guys, uh, but yeah, you'll hear, you'll hear that in between. So the judge is just... Yep, uh, so I think we're going to continue now. Yep. Okay. So that are going to be banished. He's going to have to make a pretty good rank 5 monster here to uh, clear up this boy. Uh, yeah, one Volcasaurus Sky Charger isn't going to do it. Okay, now he's going to just go for the attack over the uh, Levy of the Sea Dragon. And then... Pass. Then did he pass? I can tell. I think it's no, just no, uh, no. signifying take damage. Uh, thank you, he shed shadow. That's uh, I appreciate that. Magna Liger. Um, super Quantal. Wow. I didn't even With a red layer, actually, so that means you can use it as a quick effect. Nice. Pretty strong. So that is going to do quite well at dealing with this board. Yeah, he's. Uh, ben has the Fog Blade, but now they can sort of play this game where they. Um, it's quite, kind of who blinks first. He's got to try it because uh, he can just respond to the, um, to the Fog Blade. Yeah, especially with it being a quick effect. Does he, was that top 32 stats we just saw coming in? Uh, yeah, I think we got a, some breakdowns. Okay, we got some breakdowns for you guys afterwards, um, if that's what you're interested in. Um, yeah, what, what, we've, what our um, deck check team lead has actually done is prepare the entire bracket for us with the names of all of the players that are still remaining and all of their decks. So if there's any players that you guys want to know about, um, as soon as we've managed to get a hold of this, we'll be able to tell you and... We're going to be able to do some more polls on on what you want to see next as well. Uh, okay, so Jim passes the turn. And Ben is going to be uh, banishing Interrupted Kaiju Slumber for uh, Garmasil. Garmasil. Wow, Ben really aggressively uh, Yugi shuffling his deck there. That's what I call the Yugi shuffle. How we shuffled in the anime. Oh, what? Well, just. Um, like like over the top. 
Oh, over the top, yeah. Sorry, you're doing the hand action, and I realised that no one could see that <laughs> except for except for me. But yeah, I know what you mean. I was just I was just communicating between us. They can they can feel my spirit of, of Yugi shuffling. Don't worry about them. I was doing it just for you. I I appreciate that. Good. Okay, so we see the Magna Ligo being activated, and Fog Blade is going to shut that down. Yeah, and then he's probably going to put Gamasol on top. Yeah, Gamasol actually having 300 points weaker uh, would let. Uh, ben, oh no, Ben's just going to be going um, detaching. Ah, let's destroy his fog blade. Uh, Foolish Barrel is a follow up. Um, possible Farfa? I don't know, he probably only plays the one, right? Um, some people have been playing multiples. His deck list's not one of the best handwritten deck lists. There's two Farfas. I think that's Farfa. You really can't tell. Uh, he goes and sends the uh, rookie gloves anyway, so he's going to use Ancient Cloak's effect to add a sign of boots. The air conditioning um, unit is not happy with uh, ben, Benjamin's play here. Yeah. Just the, uh, the air conditioning god is complaining. Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to see Phantom Light Fog play being banished, especially some uh, Ruggy Gloves. And then Silent Boots is going to come down, and another rank 3 play follow up. Uh, it's another Phantom Light Breaksword. Beatrice goes to attack mode. Uh, Rugged Gloves is also going to trigger on the uh, Phantom Knights of Breaksword. He's uh, going to start attacking in here. Yeah, he attacks for trade. And that's going to end up uh, with all of his opponent's cards getting banished. And Beatrice yep. gets Pilgrim. Wow. Oh no, Black Lager is 2600. Yep. So uh, the Beatrice doesn't actually get a trade off of there, sorry. Um, Pilgrim, and then you've got 6,000. Yeah, you've got uh, 8,400 right there. Yeah. I don't know if James just doesn't realise. Unless he's got another Prime Monarch that we're not aware of. No, no, he's just shuffling him. Yeah, Ben wins. Yeah. And there we go, that's game one uh, in favour of Phantom Knights Burning Abyss. Ben, so ben, ben Sherman actually is our 2014 national champion. Oh, really? Oh, there you go, that's a little uh, tip. Yeah, with there. Mermel. Mermel. Mermel, playing against um, Tom Payne, who we had on stream. Oh, uh, I think I remember. Is this the matchup where Tom ended up going for uh, crazy dice and rolling really poorly? Yes. And then that's the reason he lost. Uh, yeah, well, not one of the only reasons. Ben Sherman actually had the best possible opener in all of the games. But yes, um, Tom managed to play out of all of them until the point where he, his only option was to play Crazy Box and hope to negate its own effect to attack over something. For, for a game and then it, yeah, it, it like, backfired. I actually think it halved his life points, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I've, got, I've got Jarvis at the side there. He's, he's nodding his head. He's actually uh, there at the event. He was the head judge. So yeah, we have um, Chad Lloyd, another one of our second place national champions in the chat. Oh, he is. He was the one who was uh, sympathising with our air conditioning situation. Oh, he was a. Uh, was he? So sorry. What did you, did you say? He was another. He was a second place uh, in the national championships. Ah, I'm trying to remember who he lost out to. Oh, I'm um, sure he'll fill you in. Yeah, it's well, quite a while ago now. I'm sure a few years ago at least. Uh, well, that's actually happening. Uh, if we take a look at the side decks, um, Ben has the three Ghost Reapers and Winter Cherries, two Vanity Fiend, uh, some System Downs, some Twin Twisters, Mask Restrict, and some Anti-Spell Fragrance. Uh, you could expect to see the 
Uh, Anti-spell fragrances? No, he's going uh, second this next game. Uh, most likely. So, mass restricts 100%. This is the only matchup you bring them in. You're not bringing in the Vanity Fiends. Uh, you... Ghost Reapers don't really make sense here because he doesn't really have anything to... Uh... They're, they're over, they're, their decks don't overlap at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's probably just a Mask of Restricts. Yeah, Mask of Restricts. Maybe Anti-Spells and Push. Yeah, and maybe Twin Twisters if you decide to... Uh... He decides to counter his opponents playing like. Yeah. Oh, this something. is really interesting. Uh, James Martin is actually playing highest in the Mega Monarchs, which is obviously very, very strong against Dark Monsters, because not only <laughs> does it banish them, it goes ahead and banishes all of them. So if it actually. Uh, if he tributes a Dark Monster to summon it, I believe he can target two monsters and then just strip all copies from uh, Ben's deck. That could be, uh, that could be huge. Um, yeah, definitely. He also has a side deck Escalation of the Monarchs. It's really interesting to see why he's siding that. Um, yeah. For which particular matchup? Probably Cosmo. Um, we're going to see Ben's ha opening hand is Twin Twister, uh, Speedroid Terror Top, Tour Guide from the Underworld, another uh, Speedroid Terror Top, and a Garmin Seal. Uh, so that's a very, very good start because he has um, a rank three, and then his normal summon is also uh, representing a rank three. Yeah, and James starting out here with potentially, I, I wouldn't say perfect, but. The max C certainly adds a lot to the hand. So he's got a max C, Domain of the Monarchs, Frost Blast of the Monarchs, Erebus, and Ether. So if he can use max C and add quite a few cards to his hand. Here's your question. Do you max C here? Because uh, the way the um, special summons are being used, they don't use the chain. So your opponent doesn't have a chance to respond max C. But now that the monster's been summoned, he has a window and he has to decide, does he use it? Oh, he, yeah, he does. He does use max C. So James chose to go first and just set a card. Is that true? I think he did. So he couldn't do anything else. Yeah, James was going first and he just passed. So Ben's actually just going in here. He could potentially win. He actually does have an almost... He has at least 5,000 damage on two Dantes. And then uh, he has any potential of Dante's uh, effect. Uh, the cards that he sends to the graveyard. Okay, tall guy. go for it. He's taking the maxi challenge. And there's Graf. Yeah, I think he's just taking the challenge right There's now. So many cards he could send away with Dante, that'd be great. The Phantom Knights Fog Blades can then give him more materials. He, um, he could hit uh, any number of Seers. Yeah, he automatically has 6-6, um, six, six, because Dante is plus an attack position. Uh, Seer 6, uh, sorry, 6-5. But still, Graph in attack mode. He only needs one more Burning Abyss monster for this to really get to the realms of James not being able to do much, because then... He just has to throw a Barbar in the graveyard. Uh, he's not playing Barbar, I assume. He actually puts the Skarm in defense mode, which probably means uh, he, because it's the free cards he sent to the graveyard. Um, he, d he did get a really poor. Did it, is that a Phantom Knight's trap, or is that a uh, Solemn? Uh, I don't know, I couldn't see actually. What else has he got? So no, it's anti spell fragrance. He did bring those in. Yeah. I thought he would. So Ben's just thinking, wow, that mill was poor. <laughs> that mill would have been almost any of the three cards, he would have been in a winning position here. Uh, but he can't back down now for this Max C challenge. Oh no, he he's has got to more continue. Special so there's a Seer, he's going to special summon Seer. Um, he has to continue. Make, could just make Asako. Not say 1000. Mm, is he playing Asako? No, he's not. He's not. I was going for Levio the Sea Dragon. Yeah, he actually doesn't have um, a third Dante. He doesn't play it. Oh, he doesn't either. Okay, so... Oh, that's that's it, though. He just Levio's back the boots in attack position. And then he's got... 18 plus 12. Boots is 1,200. No, no, it's 200 attack. Was it? Yeah. Why do I think it's 12? Because that would... Because I'm crazy. The game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said I think it was 12. Yeah, it's 12. He's short it's on the just, damage. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's a maxi challenge that could backfire horribly. Yeah. Wow. That is really tough for Ben. It's 7 5 in damage. Um, and he's got the opportunity to upgrade to uh, Beatrice. Yeah, all F0s. Nope, he's not bothering. 
the Skyrim, uh, he summoned that off of the graph. So, yeah. yes, this, he can do this. I don't, yeah, I don't quite understand. James, that. with a stack of cards in front of him, getting the turn back to him. He's just thinking to himself, why am I getting another turn? Uh, well, it just uh, Ben uh, gambled on the uh, Dante effect, and it just didn't pay out. No. I wonder how many cards he has. Uh, so James should have... Literally, literally there is, I'd be shocked if James couldn't get his uh, start up, and we're going to see uh, Twin Twister. But then again, James is very, very dependent on one normal summon. Yeah. Like, for any of his monster effects, it's... Uh, so I've actually asked for a picture of his hand here so we can see all the options that he has. Um, I think by the time we finish talking through them, he's going to complete his turn. Yeah. In fact, you know what? That's your challenge. Can you tell us what's in his hand before his uh, turn ends? <laughs> wow. Um, our judge is actually struggling to take a picture of all the cards. I didn't think he had that many. <laughs> I lost count. I just wasn't kind of, I was expecting the game to end, but uh, then the second Dante wow. kind of... Uh, okay, so we have uh, Pathism, Kuraz, Domain, Mithra, Erebus, Ether, Majesty, Fiend, uh, Maxi... Oh, he's 12 cards in hand, right? Uh, Twin Twisters, Dark Hole, I think it might be. There's a few of the cards that I can't see because the, the fanning was too shallow. Um, and there's another Domain... He's got a lot of cards. <laughs> yeah, we just saw Twin Twister and Frost Blast being used. And... I think it's probably E Teleport. Or did you already call that one out? Um, oh yeah, I think I might have be a Teleport. But anyway, we're going to see where he goes with all these. Wow. Yeah, he, he had only two Dantes in his extra deck. I feel like that was a, a mistake. Well, it's just a deck building decision, really. Yeah, well, he, he also wasn't playing the Acid Golem, which you traditionally see in uh, any rank 3 deck, because it's huge. And that would have also just given him exactly 8,000. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's not out of it, because he's playing Nightmare Shark, right? Nope. No, one... The what? No, no. Okay, so no nightmare shark. No, I think you struggle for extra deck space in the uh, Phantom Knights Burning Burst deck. Oh, okay. Um, this could be really tricky for him to actually then get the uh, actually close out. No, there's no yeah. barbers. There's no um, no nightmare sharks. Well, I think we just got to wait and see exactly how does James Martin uh, play out these 12 cards that he had from the Max C challenge. He has to be able to do something. <laughs> you, <what laughs> if you draw so? 12 and then scoop, then it's like you've, you've built your deck wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're just going to sit there and think, I don't think my deck's consistent enough. <laughs> go, hmm, something's not right here. You've got to hope that in any deck that 12 cards of your 40 cards... Win the game. Win the game. In any circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, 12 of any of your 40 cards, whatever deck you are playing, should win you the game. Unless your opponent then just goes, oh, by the way, I have Xavier. Well, then, yeah, <laughs> that would be an issue. Yeah, or if your opponent then flipped up Balance of Judgment. Because that would be better. Well, your opponent uh, only draws cards based on the number of cards you have on the field. So oh, I thought it was hand. Um... No, but they could um, heavy slump you. Yeah, heavy, heavy slump one. Oh, well, there's there's an official token built with the uh, token machine. Oh, from uh, Dublin. Yeah, um, I think it's actually someone carrying someone else <laughs> on uh, the token there. Yeah, we we usually get the uh, guys over uh, from the US for the WCQ. Um, I actually have a, quite a few of these tokens from Rimini and from the various European Championships I've been at. Yeah. Uh, it, I've got quite a few old colleagues in there who um, have uh, left the company since, and it's kind of nice. I still keep them on my desk, so it's like yeah. it never really got away. Yeah, I've actually got um, I've got all the ones from Dublin. We uh, we got a little little set done in, Dub in Dublin with a uh, PJ and um, and Robert and Ollie as well. Uh, I've got tokens with uh, Jarrell Winston who we had in uh, Rimini. Wow. 
uh, Robert uh, Grayson here. Yeah, somebody was asking about uh, Robert. He's still here. He's still around. He's actually our technical director this weekend. So, all things considered. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that that's the one. <laughs> Majesty's fiends. Domain. Domain. Clean. Let's clean everything. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that board's getting cleaned up. Yeah, there there's times, there's times. I must admit, I've done that where I, I don't even want to think about where I'm attacking what. I just know that I've got enough monsters to destroy my opponent's monsters. Uh, you're talking about down to just two cards. Um, and he's not allowed to activate monster effects. Well, he can bump the Majesty's Fiend off the field because he's got the Garmin Cell. Yeah. Oh, did, didn't he? Oh no, he, he was sent to the graveyard in this game. And he's got a Speedway Tartop as well. Yeah. Wow, Majesty's Fiend. Uh, boots just came back to the field. I don't know why. Uh, did he, he banished the flower? Banished the fog blade, right? Oh, oh, it's just his normal summon. No, no, it just came from the banish bar. The banish bar? Hmm. Are you sure? Are you sure you didn't get out of the graveyard by banishing uh, fog blade? May oh, may maybe, maybe it might have because uh, yeah. uh, it was brought off screen. Uh, Rugged gloves, gain a fire to attack. Does he play? Um, Dark Rebellion Dragon? Uh, ben? Ah, uh, yeah. No, he does not. No. Because uh, he could use Phantom Lights to break sword, destroy the back row, uh, summon back his two guys, and then go uh, Rebellion Dragon, and that would give him another way. Not that anybody really plays that, but it, I, it would be an option to win yeah. the game here. He can get him out to 200 by summoning Phantom Lights break sword and then attacking over Garmin Cell. That gets him 800 damage. Yes, yeah, so we can get him out to 200. Hmm. I think he's actually considering just dumping. Oh, he was just, just going to put um, uh, Grand Pulse in defense. <laughs> and yep, okay. we're see. Maybe see the other. If he's going to show him a stomp off, then I think that's over. There we go. Yeah, I don't think there's much more to be done. Um, He's got a speed right tower top in his hand. Yeah, the miscalculation on Ben's part just forces him all in, and he just gets completely obliterated by a Majesty's Fiend. Because uh, well, his hand could have been safe from Regeki and stuff, because the Dante's just refreshed. Uh, just refresh your hand, but well, he's he's got like a bunch of phantom lights in his graveyard, so he can still um, still make tons of plays. There we go, tower top. Yeah. I honestly think that Ben just really overextended without really knowing where his combo was going to go because it was he wasn't a guaranteed win there. Yeah, there was one back row, so there was a small level of, well, I say small, there was a level of risk there. But um, he seemed to just miscalculate the damage. Yeah. Okay, Levio the Sea Dragon. Yeah, I mean, he's still well, well in the runnings here. He can stop some attacks with those fog blades, or with the trap cards. Okay, he won't get the power bonus if he makes an XC summon because he's already used that this turn. Uh, because it has to trigger its mandatory effect of the rugged gloves. I think he's just gonna try. Yeah, he's trying to just make some kind of board presence here. I think he's gonna get grapples. Yeah, grapples in defense mode. Yeah, unfortunately, he's not playing Dark Rebellion. Ah. 
Well, okay, so he's gonna need an Airbus to get rid of this. It's not gonna actually do anything now, but. Another fog lake coming up. Yep. That's the right thing to, to pick, I think. Yeah, well, he's, it's really strange. His extra deck has none of these cards that would just benefit in this situation of, you know, Dark Rebellion Dragon or... Um, well, yeah, lots of additional options being cut, that uh, all of which would have let him sidestep this giant field and uh, close the game out. Yeah. Using, like, Nightmare Shark. However, this um, the F zero is going to cause issues here. So, tell us a bit about F zero. We've not seen it all weekend, and lots of people uh, playing it and keep saying this is the card against Cosmo. So, tell me a bit about what F zero yeah. actually does. So, during the battle phase is when we see F zero using uh, using its effect most. It's wh whenever it battles a monster, you can take one of your opponent's monsters, um, just temporarily until the end of that battle phase. Also, there's no battle damage with F zero whatsoever. Um, it can't be destroyed by battle, and if it's going to be destroyed by a card effect, you can detach a material from it to save it. So you have to somehow um, spin it or like bounce it back to the hand or something like that. Like this? Like this? That, that will do it? Yeah, Airbus will do it. So that's all she wrote. Yep, that's gonna go back. And um, he's probably going to overlay into a big monster. Uh, well, actually, he's not got he's not got enough to. Yeah, he hasn't enough to finish the game. So. And if there's any fog blades, there's surprise block, uh, surprise monsters to get in the way of this. And we see a rank five. Oh, he just my Shark Fortress. Pelides? This is Shark Fortress. Yeah, we can just look at his list. Uh, we know he's got it on there. Yeah. Which is not to. Um, actually, Fortress wouldn't have made it either, right? Because uh, if his opponent uses a Fog Blade. Oh, yeah, yeah to, right. to save the monster, yeah. Yeah, so one of the attacks would just get turned yeah, to So he goes for the um, disruption uh, that he can use both this turn and next turn and during his turn if he has any materials left. Is he even actually playing the... Oh yeah, he's playing. Yeah, so he's going to use his trap cards to revive it and then... Yeah, so he's guaranteeing the damage. Yeah. Ben's um, sat on a single monster now. I think it's a kaiju monster, actually. Yep, I'm just going to pick up that uh, grave miscalculation on uh, the opening um, from Teratop. That's yeah, and really, really unfortunate. For those who are asking, we actually just hit time, so... Uh, again, and uh, missing things like Barber and Nightmare Shark are all very uh, great things at cheap shotting your opponent during the end of match procedure. Yeah. Uh, none of these options he has access to. Uh, but he does have the gift of the first turn, free Master Restrict and anti spell fragments yeah. to um, try and bog his opponent down. Uh, see these guys shuffling up and then we'll begin uh, end of match procedure because uh, the game has to end with a clear vi uh, clear winner 
uh, to progress on to the top 16. Nope. <laughs> That's two dice. They're rolling two dice. There we go. So we've got a nine versus a eight. I don't know why they're rolling a dice here. Uh, because you you have to decide randomly. Oh, well, I mean, who gets to go first? Here. Yeah. Okay. So James is going first. So Ben's hand going second here is match change two. I think that's Seer, it's hard to make out, it's so shiny. <laughs> Solemn Warning, Terror Top, and an Anti-Spell Fragrance. Would have been great if you were going first. You would have, yeah. Um, and for James Martin here we see Tenacity, Erebus, the Prime Monarch, Domain and Return the Marks. Yeah, that's actually a really savage hand. Um, <laughs> yes, gets the Pantheus and Pantheus and gets rid of Prime, gets two new cards, banishes, uh, can get himself a Storm Fourth if he needs it. Um, yeah, seems really, really strong. So we're only going to see two turns for each player here due to the end of match procedure when you enter a single elimination portion of the tournament. And as we're in the top 32, that is where we are now. Okay, so we're going to see a Mithra, and we're going to see a uh, Return of the Monarchs, and then an Erebus. Erebus is going to take one card away from his opponent, so Ben's going to be starting down a card. Oh, uh, somebody knocked the table. <laughs> Time. Yeah, that's just one card less that Ben's going to be able to play with. Yeah, and he had such a fantastic hand for going first as well. Yeah. Which, had he not hit end of match procedure, he would have been able to choose to do so. Yeah, I think um, in this case as well, Ben. That token's actually quite interesting um, because it will stop him summoning Terratop because he controls a monster. Wow, that is a good point. That's a really good point. And because it's the first turn, uh, James won't be attacking, so he won't be thinking of removing the token. No. So that token just acts as a hindrance. It also stops all the Burning Abyss monsters being played, because yeah. it's a token. There's so many reasons why that token is good right now. What level is the token of the Mithra? Um, well, he's not playing any Synchro, so I don't think the level's relevant. Uh, I think it's level... might be level 3. I don't know why I keep thinking 3. I want to think three as well, but that's just because everything that we see on Ben's side of the field is level three. <laughs> yeah, that might be why. That's the, the optical illusion. And he gets back into Ever. Just looking to Ben. What did Ben lose in his hand? There, he lost one of the monsters. Yeah, uh, he's got some trap cards. Unfortunately, those trap cards. Uh, so this is Ben's first of two turns in the end of time procedure here. Yeah, and having two traps in this situation, he's just going to normal summon. And yeah, he can still make the special summon off of the... Um, yeah, he actually had a, a mass change too. Yeah, he would need a dark monster to go anywhere with that, but um, first he needs an answer to the uh, effort. Yeah, it's pretty big. And his opponent has an effort in his hand. Yeah. Um, something interesting, so as far as time is concerned, James actually has has a card for time, which is Caius the Mega Monarch. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> has he got that in his hand? No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. It's just, just something interesting. Yeah, okay, we're going to see um, Stormforth. So tokens level one, not three. Ah, level one, okay. And then we're going to see Stormforth and Aether. Wow. 
Ben is in a losing position here. Unless he plays Master Kiro of Vapor, then there's not much more that goes on in this turn. I don't think even that does anything, right? Uh, no. Master Kiro of Vapor. Um, is that what it's called? The, um, oh no, the Vapor's the blue one. Yeah. Uh, uh, am I thinking of Kamikaze? Yeah, you're thinking of... I don't think that was his actual name uh, in the TCG. I think that's the OCG okay. name. Koga. Oh yeah, apologies. Yeah, it was. Uh, no, it's oh, divine, divine wind. wind. Yeah. Um, can't be destroyed by battle. I believe it destroys monsters you draw a card. Is that right? Yeah. It's just got two seven, so not enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, divine wind. Sorry, not uh, divine wind. Not vapor. Not kamikaze. That was the OCG name. Ah, this is really bad, Ben. I feel like Ben is kind of throwing this match away. He, if he just got on with his turn and. Scooped, he'd have actually got to choose to go first. Of which then he'd have been in a great position this yeah. game. But even if he just not miscalculated the damage he needed, he would have won the match and already been progressing. Mm. He also has some side that Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to come across too harsh towards Ben because he has made it to the top thirty-two uh, with this build. So obviously it's been working for the rest of the tournament. But there's just like so many ways he could have won. But then any time I say that, he could have that having that card in his extra deck could have cost him a game. Say. Free rounds ago and stopped yeah. him getting into the top tie. So I can't. Yeah. And in all honesty, and in all honesty, we're saying this because in hindsight, this is what's happened. But if you look at the fact that Ben Ben had won the game, it was really brave of him and actually quite a good tactical move to just say, you know, what? if I mill well off Estante, I'm win. going. I'm going through. I'm the going the, through the, the odds were in his favor. Like um, they were. Yeah, twenty nine monsters. There's uh, a lot you, of different monsters that he could have he could have uh, got there. Yeah, you run the math and then he hit three spell cards. Yeah. Ben's gonna flip over the spell fragrance if that had been turn one. No, we can't have it all. I feel more frustrated about about that. I feel really sorry for Ben that he didn't get to go first in that game. Some fusion gonna come down for James. He is he's actually like that's a nice restricted room. Was this the same list that we've just been talking about for such a long time that I forgot that he was playing it? Uh yeah, yeah it is. It. Uh, Tom was playing it last round, Tom Rose. Uh Panzer Dragoon, and then we're gonna see next summon. It's just weird because Tom to oh no, it was Tom, because he was also he also had Panzer Dragon and Orden and Thousand Restrict in that exact order. Oh, maybe they uh, know each other. Uh, console of Libis. Warning. Yeah, I think it has to in this situation. Can see at least so that drops, drops the life points back into uh, Ben's Ben's uh, Ben's court here. He has to he has to be able to deal with. Just dealing over 1,000 damage to his opponent to be able to advance to the top 16 of the UK National Championships here. Uh, Prime Monarch returning. Oh, yeah, I've just been informed that Tom and Martin actually, Tom and James actually go to the same locals. Oh, really? Find someone in the chat, yep. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, it looks like. Uh, Looks like they're going to be in good spirits. Um, I'm still putting this ball in James's court, so it looks like James is going to be progressing. Yeah, just uh, Ben's obviously paid this, the 2,000 life points for the Solemn Warning. That's not been quite yeah. updated yet. Yeah, and there's also oh, sorry, there's also uh, 1,600 damage coming in from either of these attacks over Speedroid Taratop. Yeah. Yeah, so just for the people who um, uh, just tuning in, asking about the turns of time, we're now in single elimination portion of the tournament. Oh, sorry, it's more than 16, it's 24 because of the domain. Yeah, um, we're, we're now in the single elimination por portion of the tournament, which means the end of round procedure changes 
from uh, an extra, so you, you get three end phases each. It's now down to two end phases each. So this is actually the last turn for Ben Sherman here. Uh, it's a fact Veiler, and that's, that's good it. That's game over. James yeah. progressing to the top thirty, so like top sixteen. Yeah. He just uh, he just beat the top thirty two. Uh, he's into the top sixteen with XC Monarchs. Yeah. So that was a really intense game. Yeah, um, it was. It was close. I mean, I agree. He was game. right to take the take the risk. It was um, definitely right to take the risk. That was the, the correct play. Uh, it just uh, it didn't work out on the Dante, and then it was. Um, Really unfortunate. Uh, I, there must be more logic to it, but it did kind of look like he wasn't thinking his moves through to me when he was making all these extra deck plays. But he must have been. Uh, uh, he, was, he was just gambling on the. Uh, yeah, I think on it, the Dante. It, it's somewhat reliant on what mills you you have as well. So even from from like the first, from the first Dante, it made the next Dante, which he was hoping made the next Dante. Which then... he doesn't play the third Dante though. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry. He was anything on the second, else. Second one would lead on. He to... was literally one monster, one level three short of making. Yeah. Uh, but he could have played any number of extra deck monsters, which would have won. Yeah. Uh, but much to uh, James's uh, delight, uh, that wasn't the case. Yeah. Um, so James is going to be progressing. Um, so we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be back with the top sixteen very, very soon. So stay with us and uh, enjoy the show.